Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome here as we prepare ourselves for race number nine of the season of the NRSL Winston Super Speedway Series. We're starting to get down to the nitty gritty because after tonight's race, we've only got one more race left to determine the 12 drivers that will battle in this season's chase for the championship. And I'm just giving you guys a heads up as well. After race 10 is made public, there will be a video that will be coming out with a poll where you guys are going to get to choose five tracks that we've already been to here during the regular season that you want to see return for the playoffs. So just letting you know that you guys are going to get the input of what the five tracks are going to be that are going to basically determine the championship here this season. But as I said, this is race number nine. Only two more races, including this one, until the drivers are going to be determined that are going to be battling it out for that championship. And again, if you're new to this series, the top ten in points at the end of the regular season are going to make it into the playoffs, and two wild card drivers that are outside of the top ten in points, inside the top thirty in points, that have a win. If they have two wins, that puts them in wild card so slot seed number one. Um, right now, though, there are only three drivers that are outside of the top ten that have one trip to victory lane. Um, actually, let me correct that. Four drivers that are outside the top 10 in points, inside the top 30 in points that have a win. Eli Bright, Levi McIntyre, Dallas McIntosh, and Diego Yepes. Right now, it's between those four for the two wild card positions. But here tonight at Armory Digital Super Speedway, under the lights, it should be a good one. This track can hold them three wide, sometimes four wide. All three lanes move. It's going to come down, really, to drafting partners, I think. Let's go down trackside, get those most famous words in motorsports. Drivers, start your engines. And on the front row, you've got the 12 of Isaac Nichols. Now, Nichols coming into this race really struggling in the points, so if they could get a really good run, now would be the time to get it. He is 38th in points coming into this race, and he needs to get himself at least into the top 30 in points with a win to have any shot of making it into the postseason. He's got his teammate Dylan Young right behind him. And to his outside is the 97 of Zach Winkle. Now on Winkle's side, he's inside the top 30 in points coming into this race, 27th in points, but he needs that trip to victory lane. Could, t could tonight maybe be the night? Kind of hard to see the cars coming off the pit lane there, but now you can see them. Very unusual pit road exit here at Armory Digital. I had the pleasure of driving this racetrack about a week, week and a half ago during the uh, Throwback Racing League special event. It's a really fun race to take part in, and that was the uh, updated version of Armory Digital. This is the uh, original version of Armory Digital. They've recently come out with a Armory Digital 2017, which uh, looks a little bit better, but has the same great racing, whether it be offline or online. Let's give you your top 10 in points coming into this race. Right now, Steve Morgan, who went to victory lane in last week's race at Talladega Super Speedway, is the points leader. Surprisingly, that win only has him one point over Zachary Fitzwater, though. Those two have been swapping that points lead back and forth the last couple of weeks. Zach Rogers, the only two-time winner this season, is third in points, with Johnny Gardner fourth, Alex Gray in fifth, and right now the drivers that would make it into the playoffs via top 10 are completed by Ashlyn Boyd, Patrick Smith, Brenda Carmichael, Preston Plourd, and Joseph Swrigley. Eli Bright is 11th in the point stands, first car outside the top 10 with a win. He would currently be the holder of wildcard spot number one, and Levi McIntyre went from Daytona is 15th. He currently holds wildcard spot number two by one point over Dallas McIntosh, who right now is just outside of wild card spot number two. So we'll have to keep tabs on the 28 and the 99 during the course of this race. 20 laps await us. Green flags in the air here tonight at Armory Digital. The 12 and the two lined up nose to tail here for the start of this race. So teammates getting to work together very early for the Penske boys. Dylan Young right behind Isaac Nichols. Benjamin Miles, our winner from M&M Super Speedway, right behind him. And then right behind him, one of the two drivers we were going to keep tabs on here tonight for that wild card position, the 28 of Dallas McIntosh. Dylan Young going to try and take the race lead for himself. Puts Nichols up on the high side and will clear his teammate. Through the middle groove there through three and four. Dallas McIntosh, though, wants to get himself a very valuable bonus point for leading the lap. 
going to get to the left rear corner panel, but can he draw even by the time they get to the start finish line? Answer looks like it's going to be no. First lap of the evening going to be led by Dylan Young by just about a full car length over McIntosh, who now will have the inside line going into turn one. Right here, right there, one of the toughest parts of this racetrack. The transition between turns one and two down that inside line, there is a heavy, heavy dip. And it makes your car either pull to the apron or shoot up the racetrack. You saw the 46 of Johnny Gardner down there kind of get a little squirrely. That's that kink I'm talking about. It's one of the most difficult parts of this racetrack, but it definitely allows the middle and outside line to be able to get some momentum by the time they get to the back straight. As thought McIntosh might lead this lap, but Benjamin Miles, big head of steam, he will put his Kodak Max Monte Carlo to the point, and he will lead this lap just by about a car length over Johnny Gardner, who now goes to the inside. Looks like he'll put his first Union Chevy Monte Carlo out in front. There's that dip right there, and they are four wide, about three rows deep. Make it four rows deep now. Ooh, there's some leaning going on back there. I don't like the look of that. Phil Parker and Eli Bright were literally leaning on each other, and you cannot do that if you're four wide. You've got to give room, and they're still leaning on each other. You see them right there, that white and red car in the center of the field. Now they've settled it out, but my goodness, that was close. They were leaning on each other for almost about three quarters of a lap. Johnny Gardner will become the third different driver to lead a lap here tonight. Now the battle is on between William Brock in the 30, Michael Norman in the 3, and here comes the 13 of Tim Walsh as they're now going to go 4 wide again. That's Ace Garcia in the 5 being put in the middle. I thought McIntyre was the one going to make that move, but instead it's Fitzwater down the bottom making it 4 wide for the 3rd position. Norman, Garcia, Walsh, and Fitzwater. Now it settles out to about double wide, maybe 4 wide further back there as Fitzwater got 2 tires down the apron. Almost came up into the grill of Phil Parker. Nice crossover for the lead. That's William Brock to the bottom of the racetrack, trying to take the top spot away from Johnny Gardner. Skittles Pontiac back there. You saw the number 36 of James Richardson was down the bottom of the racetrack, but that blue line down there is just like yellow line at Daytona and Talladega. It is out of bounds. So if you go below that and you advance your position, Better get that spot back, or NSRL, N NRSL driver. <laughs> Sorry. Didn't roll off the tongue the way I planned. NRSL officials will have to penalize the driver that makes that move. Noticing a driver working his way up towards the front there, that number one of Diego Yepes. He's one of the drivers that is in the hunt for a wild card spot. Now, if he can go to victory lane tonight for a second time this season, that would jump him immediately from fourth in the wild card race to position one for a wild card position. Because he came into this race 29th in the standings. Last week was at Talladega was uh, kind of a rarity in the last couple of weeks. Bad finish for him. Ever since going to victory lane back at uh, Hillside, things have really been going well for that team, but kind of found a bump in the road at Dega last week as William Brock continues to show the way. But now Zachary Fitzwater all over his back bumper. The two most consistent drivers this season have been Steve Morgan and Zachary Fitzwater. Morgan found victory lane last week. Fitzwater still trying to find victory lane for the first time this season. They are the only two drivers this year, talking about Fitzwater and Morgan, who have an average finishing position in their first eight starts of the season, less than 10th place. Steve Morgan has an average finishing of 8.75. Fitzwater bests that with an average finish of 8.38. They have been super consistent this year. We saw Morgan get the victory last week. Fitzwater wants it to be his turn here tonight. I think we can safely say that they will be two drivers that will battle for the championship in the playoffs. There's no doubt about that. I don't think mathematically either Morgan or Fitzwater can fall outside of the top 10 in the point standing. So they will make it mathematically via top 10 in points regardless. And Fitzwater just making even more of a case for himself here tonight, running up front again. Probably kicking himself after what happened last week. Last week he kind of gave the win to Steve Morgan when uh, he was battling for second place and that kind of alleviated any pressure off Morgan from defending the lead on the final lap. 
and that's what uh, not only gave Morgan a trip to victory lane, but also gave him the points lead by one point coming into tonight's race over Fitzwater. Well, we lost the Penske boys for a moment, but they're back. Dylan Young and Isaac Nichols have made their way back towards the front here as we're closing in on the halfway point of this race. So far, we have completed seven and a half laps. All of them have been under green. Which makes me wonder, will we start having to think about green flag pit stops here tonight in Armory? The reason I say that is because so many times I say, you know, I don't think they're going to have to pit, and they've ended up having to pit. So, I'm, I'm, I'm erring on the side of predictable, I guess, of the, of the last couple of weeks where I thought it wasn't going to be a, bat a, a battle that would come down to pit strategy and it ended up being a pit strategy race. Got a couple drivers up here towards the front we haven't talked about much this season. How about the 7 of Jonathan Zola and the 22 of Tony Green? And also the 50 of Austin LaPlante has made his way up here towards the front. Lant had a great showing last week, jumped up nine spots in the standings to 20th in points. The closest he had of going to victory lane was uh, back, I think, at the season opening at Daytona. Where he finished, I think it was in third place. Let's see where he finished last week. Yeah, last week was fourth. I'm pretty certain that it was a third place run at Daytona. It's his best finish of the season, and that is indeed the case. Nichols taking the lead away from teammate Dylan Young, and now there'll be another Ford out in front, this time Jonathan Zorlin in the seven. I believe all 42 cars that took the green flag are still up in the lead pack. There's the last of them. You're looking right there at the guy who came in as the points leader, Steve Morgan. He is the caboose on this 42 car train. Zach Rogers back here as well. First and third in points side by side for the 41st position. Got a couple of other drivers up here in the back that uh, are running well in the point standings and can ill afford a bad run here tonight. The eight of Eli Bright, and if you look just up ahead, you'll see the number 18. There he is, Preston Bloor, who comes into this race inside the top 10 in the point standings. Actually raced his way into the top 10 points after last week's race at Talladega. He's ninth in the standings coming to this one. And I believe that car that's way up top side, just to the outside of him. I think we're focused on him. The 77 Joseph Srigley, he's the driver that maybe comes into this race with the most pressure because he is in that critical 10th position in points coming into this race. The gap between him and Eli Bright, who is currently 11th in points, is four positions. And you see, right now, that inside line is the Circuit City number eight in the same row as the 77. So it could come pretty close between these two of who's going to be heading into our final regular season race inside the top 10 in points and who isn't. Let's look back. Oh, there's another driver that's running well in the points stands. It's also faded back here. Actually, a couple. Alex Gray in the 90, and we're looking here at the 16 of Ashlyn Boyd. That's fifth and sixth in points. Gray fifth and Boyd sixth. Still early though. Still a long ways to go in this one. I mean, I know it doesn't really seem like a long ways to go when you've got seven and a half laps left, but this is about a three mile racetrack. So it takes them a while to get around here. And we've seen drivers fall to the back, move to the front. Case in point, the two Penske cars. They were at the front to start, they faded back, and then we saw them back up towards the front near halfway. Zach Winkle now the race leader. Nathan Stapleton has made his way up to second place. Stapleton's a driver that's starting to make some uh, some moves to maybe get himself up towards the top 10 in points. He made a good move two weeks ago. Jumped up in the points to uh, 18th, but then last week at Dega dropped six spots to the 24th position. So he's trying to rebound back. And then how about, how about the 55 there of Jay Jefferson? There's a driver that could really use a good run. Jefferson coming into this race currently 39th in points. Really use a good run. And there's another driver right there, Emmanuel Hartnett in the 33. Now Hartnett coming into this race is 13th in points. He uh, jumped up six spots in the point standings after last week's race at Talladega. So trying to make himself a late season bid into the top 10 in the points. Angel Navarro, I just saw him there topside, the tied Ford, and 
boy, talk about a guy that seemed to hit rock bottom the last couple of weeks. I mean, this was a guy about three weeks ago who was up inside the top ten in points, was looking really consistent, like he was going to make it into the playoffs via the point standings. And now coming into this race, about maybe three weeks later, he is 23rd in points. The wheels have just come off the comeback train there. As William Brock to the inside, and here comes Charles Sanford. We've said it every single week how Pontiac has been close to maybe getting their first win of the season. Chevy and Ford have already found victory lane, but Pontiac, the only manufacturer that's not yet made it into the victory circle. Well, Sanford making his way to the front. Here he's got JT Bryant and Seth Cole in tow. And Charles Sanford, another driver, kind of in the same boat as Jay Jefferson, really struggling in the points. He is 40th in the stands coming into this race. Trying to find victory lane. Was a key player back at Hillside, but wasn't able to close the deal. And here comes JT Bryant, and number 88, starting to make himself up here. And I and mentioned the Pontiac. Now you're starting to see some of them come to the front here in the closing stages. 44 of Seth Cole, and also right in that middle groove is the green number 18 of Preston Floyd. William Brock out in front, though, and as he hits the line, we have five laps remaining here at Armory. Maybe we will not have to make pit stops. I don't know. I have no clue what the fuel window is. JT right there in second. His teammate starting to close up here. That 28 of Dallas McIntosh back there just inside the top 10. Side by side with Hartnett. I think that's for about maybe the eighth position. So could those two maybe work together as the front three single file. Chevy, Ford, Pontiac, Brock, Bryant, Cole, and there we go. Well, there we go. Pit stops. <laughs> what did I just say about a half a lap ago? Maybe we won't have to have green flag pit stops. Uh, wrong again. Now you saw right there that caution cone. That was not where they had to slow down at. It's the, where the pit stalls begin. So it looks like they're going to get slowed down in time and make the pit road speed and... Hit within five laps to go, it's turning into another fuel strategy race. This is going to turn the race lead over still to William Brock. Well, he gapped the whole entire field there. This is the battle now for second, but may not last long if these drivers are all going to come to pit road this lap. Let's see if the 30 is going to come to pit road this time. And it looks like he's slowing. William Brock's coming in. So is Bright LaPlante. Charles Sanford going to stay out. And this is a good case scenario for Sanford because somebody else stayed out with him, Zach Winkle. So they'll produce a little bit more speed together on this lap than William Brock would have on the last lap by himself. Winkle's going to try and get ahead of Charles Sanford here, though. Not sure how wise that is. That does hurt the lap speed. But maybe Winkle wants to make absolutely certain that he gets out ahead of Charles Samper when they make their pit stop. Hartnett also stayed out. He's in third. And Shelley also decided to stay out there. He's fourth. Dylan Young fifth. Michael Norman in sixth. And I believe those six drivers are the last ones that need to make their pit stops here. We'll see if this gains them any track position here in the closing stages. So as the race leader now, Zach Winkle, comes to pit road. See if anybody of those six stays out. Nope, they're all in. So now we're going to have to see where Winkle comes out in relation to the 30 of William Brock. He was the one that was the race leader when the cycle of pit stops began. JT Bryant was also up in the conversation, but he was one of the first that came to pit road. It's like it's fuel only for the 97. Just enough to get to the finish. So apparently tire wear hasn't been an issue. And look at Sanford. His team getting the job done on pit road. He's going to beat Zach Winkle off of pit road. So now it'll be the 35 and the 30 that we're going to have to keep tabs on. Nice job by the Tabasco number 35 crew getting that pit stop done. Sanford going to come off pit road. You just saw there in the top right of your screen the 30 of William Brock. And it looks like Sanford's going to get out ahead. And this is very important because this next time by when they hit the stripe, it's the white flag lap. Brock's closing. 
So this is going to maybe be a battle between the 35 and the 30 here in the closing stages. Brock's going to have a big head of steam too. zamper has got to do some blocking to kind of block the, stop the momentum. Moves up. Nice block. White flag displayed. Here comes Brock to the inside of Sanford for the race lead. Not sure that was where Brock wants to make the move. Sanford's going to be behind the 30 going down the back straightaway. He'll have a chance to maybe try the inside line when they get through three and four. Eli Bright now moves to third, but I don't know if these guys are going to catch these two. I think it's going to be mano a mano, Brock versus Sanford. Brock clears, Sanford trying to get in behind the 30. He's still stuck on the high side. And look at Eli Bright. Look at the run the eight car got. Can he make a move here in the closing stage? He's got enough momentum. He could do it. Here comes Preston Plourd. Oh, this is going to be close. Can they get to the inside of Brock coming to the stripe? Brock's got to do some blocking. Preston Plourd to the inside. Does he have enough momentum? To the line. Preston Plourd did it. Holy cow. He was fifth place when they crossed the line for the white flag. But enough momentum got him to the stripe by two one hundredths over William Brock to take the checkers. Unbelievable. He moved Eli Bright to the middle group. I thought it was going to be three wide per second, but he did have enough momentum to get to the left rear of Brock, who tried to throw the block but couldn't do it. And Preston Plourd is going to maybe secure himself a spot in the playoffs and gets Pontiac their first win of the season here tonight at Armory Digital. That was crazy. I thought maybe it was going to be Eli Bright that had the chance of getting by both Sanford and Brock. But in the end, it was Preston Plourd who put himself right place, right time to get the position. Wow. That was amazing. That was beautifully done on the part of Preston Plourd. Oh my goodness. And the reason I said he may have secured himself a spot into the playoffs is because he came into this race inside the top 10 in points, ninth place. This will help him jump up in the point standings. And it will also, let's take a look at this. I'm just going to look at this from helicopter view while I'm talking here. This will also have him with a win, so it'll put him in good stead heading into next week. Look at this. He moves Eli Bright into the middle. And look, he had the help from Ashland Boyd on the bottom, gave him enough momentum. And look at that, my goodness, just barely enough forward momentum to get him to the line. That was about maybe half a car length. Well, it was maybe less than half a car length that Preston got that win by. How about that? My goodness. What a battle. What a race. That was great. Green flag from start to finish. Pit stops in between, and the guy that crossed the line in fifth when the white flag was displayed noses out the win on the following lap. Unbelievable. William Brock so close. 25 one thousandths of a second between him and his first win of the season. He'll get second place. Ashland Boyd, I think Preston Plourd owes a great debt of gratitude to Ashland Boyd as Boyd's going to end up with third, Eli Bright in fourth, and Charles Sanford in fifth. So I think this might actually, this top... Uh, podium finish for Boyd. Might put Ashland Boyd in the playoffs. Tony Green's going to get sixth. That's a guy that really needed a good run, as was Sanford. Zach Winkle, seventh. James Shelley in eighth. Ninth for JT Bryant. And Seth Cole will complete the top ten. Gone down through the remainder of the finishing results. Fitzwater was 16th. And Morgan was 22nd. So, Zachary Fitzwater will take over the points lead again. They continue to flip-flop the points lead to the 9 and the 75. To look on down through the remainder of the finishing results. Couple of names I see down there. Uh, you got Levi McIntyre, who came into this race in the second wild card spot ahead of Dallas McIntosh. Well, McIntosh finished 32nd to McIntyre's 38th, so that could put uh, Levi McIntyre out of the wild card picture and McIntosh in heading into our regular season finale. And also, you look down here, you've got Zach Rogers there, 39th. I think his two wins, though, still enough for him to make the playoffs. And how about Alex Gray, dead last here tonight in the 42nd position. He was 5th in points, and his gap back to 10th in the stands was a meager 17 points coming into this race. So it's uh, still going to be close on whether he's going to make it into the playoffs or not. He's uh, going to need a good run next week. But anyway, 
Preston Plourd, I'm almost certain, has locked himself up a spot in the playoffs with this win here tonight. His first win of the season and Pontiac's first win of the season here at Armory Digital Super Speedway. That's going to do it here tonight. Next week, it is our regular season finale where we will determine the 12 drivers that will battle it out for this season's five race championship battle. Uh, again, if you didn't see it at the beginning, uh, when that race comes out, race number 10, there will be another video that will come out where you guys will get to vote on the top five favorite tracks that we've been to here during the regular season that will be the schedule for the five race playoffs for the championship. So thank you all for tuning in to tonight's race. If you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a like, subscribe to become part of the crew today. Be sure to check out the NRSL as well. And we will now show you your point standings heading into next week's uh, playoffs determining race. As you've been watching Production SRA Offline Racing as Best, good night from Armory Digital Super Speedway.